Guys, you know what they say. A good lunch has the power to alleviate trauma, and that is exactly what Adrian's going to do. We've got a flank steak with a red wine reduction and turmeric shrimp. Now, um, this is going to— And don't forget that Asian salad. I didn't even mention the Asian salad, because why would I? What did he do? Throw mandarin oranges on top of spinach? Asian salad. (laughs) (laughs) What is a reduction? Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck podcast. My name's Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, mateys. I just want to say real quick before I get to Pat. Um, Nick is in a robe right now, and um, it's a warm robe. It's a little chilly outside. Uh, building doesn't have great insulation, but I got to say, he looks absolutely stunning in this robe, which I just know it's going to be a great podcast. I think I look stunning because I feel stunning. Yeah. It's a really comfortable robe, and I think I'm in the zone tonight. Uh, Pat, you're just wearing a blue t-shirt over there. It's the producer, Pat. Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? It's weird, because I didn't ask how you were doing that time, but you answered, and then every other time when I do ask, how are you, you just blow past me. Uh, Dylan, I've been meaning to uh, talk to you about that. Um, I've listened to the last episode, uh, and uh, I have a prepared statement uh, that I'd like to uh, read. What? Was it about you being trashed? <laughs> okay. I wouldn't put it that way, but uh, let me get to my... <clears throat> Uh, prepared statement. And we'll get to the show, I I promise. We promise you we'll talk about Bravos below deck. Uh, Dear audience, I would like to address my poor behavior in drunken performance that I turned out last episode. It was unbecoming of me as a world-class podcaster, a creator of endless memories, A creator of endless memories and countless water cooler talking points in in the workplace. Mm -hmm. It all went down last Wednesday when I drank an entire bottle of Chardonnay, four beers, (laughs) and took two random pills. (laughs) I knew there was something different. And took two random pills that I found in the pocket of a sweater I hadn't worn in a while. Fuck. Sorry. (laughs) While the onus of my bad behavior lies firmly on the laps of my two co-hosts, Dylan and Nick, as a stand-up guy, I will take 4% blame for my activities. Um, I hope you are willing to forgive them as I already have. And now let the show begin and be prepared to be blown away by my performance tonight. Um, Okay, a couple things. A little long-winded. Really got to get to the show. But I do want to ask... Uh, are you putting the majority of the blame of the quality of that episode on me, Nick? I think he's blaming his drunkenness on him. What's I, the 496? Very confused about the 496. Uh, he gives us 96% of the blame for him getting so drunk. Oh. And I think the reason we are receiving that blame is because of all the numerous times we're like, Patrick, please get less drunk when we're podcasting. <laughs> uh, and if that's what he means by the onus is on us, he actually... Be behind him. Just added some. Uh, you you just, some beer. You added beer to wine. Yes, I did, sir. And you guys better do a better job this don't, episode. Don't drip on the board. <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> so we'll get into the episode right now. But I do want to say, um, statement started off strong, but raised more concerns uh, than we had uh, when we closed the shop down last week. We could be in for another rough night, but I'm excited to talk about Bravos. Below deck. But yeah, it's like this. It's this. um, this We're not yet. This lack of accepting blame, responsibility for something. It is it is just stereotypical addict and i mean oh he has yet to hit rock bottom that's one oh, but 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 <laughs> my question is we've talked about the taking random pills you find so many times we've said pat you can't take random you know little pharmaceuticals you just can't do it and i thought that we had made strides in that cuz he hadn't done it for such a long time i'm kind of I don't know if you'll find one. Maybe pop it in, though. Actually, camp. Uh, so maybe I am partially to blame. All right, let's get to Bravo's Below Deck. Uh, last we left off 
we saw the second tease of Ashton falling in the water. Uh, we were very frustrated by that. But this week, we see a lot of it. Um, guys, before we get to the accident, we need to talk about knots. We need to talk about the rating system. We need to talk about how we felt in general about the episode. Nick, give me a knots. You're asking for a general thoughts. I want your knots. Thoughts and knots. All right, baby. Um, I'm going to give this episode. What did I give it last week? Does anybody recall? Uh, a little too high. 87 too high. knots, yeah, I think. You were up I did. In the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is when that becomes a problem because this episode is 87 knots, and you, like a dummy, assigned that score to something that wasn't in the 80s last week. Excuse me. It's very rude. No, I think because. To be honest, I think this week and last week were neck and neck. I think you guys were still severely underrating last week. I'm going to give it this week 89 knots. All right. Whatever. Neck and neck, those Pat? two. Uh, I think this is still middle of the road, but better than last week's episode, 70 knots. What a harsh, harsh critic. Yeah, I think there was a lot of juice this episode, a lot of meat. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, to quote, Cap- did you say eighty-seven knots? Then that was your yeah, score. Yeah, I just slipped that in there. Uh, to quote Captain Lee, we have to ask ourselves, "What the hell happened at the beginning of this episode?" And you know, it's a lot of moving parts. Uh, Nick, do you want to break down uh, what went down on the swim deck? Oh yeah, some of the more technical aspects. Mm. Well, there's the tow line, and of course the cleat, and yeah. the tow lines around the cleat. And yeah. Ashton was s- stepping on the port side of the cleat tow line the water side. line, and it wrapped, and they fucked up. Is basically yeah. what I'm trying to. And tell that's you. why I kicked to you for technicality because I knew you'd knock it out of the park. He did a great job, <laughs> probably better than the show in the footage that we saw at the tail end. Not to get ahead of myself, but I still have to say I have no clue. Was this man's life really in danger? at any point (laughs) it's a great (laughs) question i wanted to ask you guys later in the episode but let's just talk about it now i mean am i should i feel bad for thinking that these people were being a bunch of babies about this i mean it just didn't seem that bad that's that was my thought initially and then we had that sobering meeting okay so we had the tender that's that little boat that trails uh the big boat that all the people, they usher people back and forth the island. So I'm yelling, tender. That was part of the problem was he was kind of, I think he was kind of in between both. There was a book. Kesha? Yeah, and it's timber when she says it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> really sorry. No, I love Kesha. Um, I do too. So, um, so I think there was a, a line tied to that tender and somehow his foot was there. But we know he's a man that's been in the water. He knows how to swim. And... Uh, I don't think he was really in any uh, danger of having his uh, uh, foot ripped off or drowning. Okay, a lot to break down there, but yes, you're 100% right. There does reach a point where that rope is completely taut with the tender, and then it brings it back a little bit. But if you get caught in the middle of that point of uh, uh, tension, you're in a lot of fucking trouble. So I do think that, yeah, he was in danger of having his foot pretty fucked up, but again... Thank you to Brent because he gave the rope more slack when that point hit. I do have to ask, Brent is the hero of this situation who had a camera, threw it to the ground, and did what he could to help the situation. Um, Not the hero? Riley, how do you not know to go immediately to that cleat and do what the fucking cameraman knew how to do? I'm going to defend Riley for a second here. What her first, and it's like embedded in you. Obviously, she's been on boats for a while. She got on the CB or whatever the fuck you call that and ordered and stopped the boat. And Captain uh, Lee yelled at her saying you should say it three times next time. But she did do it once. She did not get emotional. She was like a, a lizard. I loved her calm demeanor, although she did get uh, yelled at a little bit later, like you said, for not saying it three times. And also he said barely audibly, but I thought it was pretty audible. It seemed like everybody understood what was going on when she said it the first time. Well, the boat stopped. Obviously, it hurt it, you old fuck. Um, it's incredible how you can read a uh, situation so differently because I think you guys are bozos. And I think that, um, maybe I'm pretty, I think this is Chicago in the early 1990s because you guys are bozos right now. I, it will (laughs) fucking bozos. (laughs) I just think I may be a little aggro, uh, towards Riley, particularly after this evening's events, but we're going to get there. I could just saying right now, I'm done with Riley. I know you're listening. I'm done. Not me, Riley. Done. Hit me up on IG, baby. All right. Ashton. Uh, bobs up 
everything's fine, uh, but we do have to uh, teach a lesson here. And uh, Lee's wheels start spinning already, and he's getting very, very, very emotional about this. Pat, hit us with a clip. That scares the f- out of me. We were within 30 seconds of him dying, and I have to call his parents and tell them their son dead, and I'm responsible. I don't know how I deal with that. All right, we'll go get calmed down, make sure everything's secured back there. Yeah, my apologies, Ken. I have kids. And I don't know how I'd make that call. I I need a minute. He begins crying. Take take a breath, man. Yeah. Calm, Calm down. Uh, I mean, right? Like, what are you doing talking about your kids and making that phone call? Well, I can tell you, Dill. As a man who's uh, getting up uh, in the years uh, like Captain Lee, uh, you start getting uh, depleted of your testosterone and you become an insane, over-emotional, crazy broad. And that's uh, (laughs) that's what's happening here. Yeah. And uh, we should take his leadership away because uh, he's getting a little nutty. Um, Can I tell you what stuck out to me from that clip? Yeah, the score, that music oh. was yeah, inc- I was moved. Well, uh, it was like a it was like a a, a sad hookah den. That's what it sounded like. Hey, uh, dude, I've li- uh, I've watched Star Wars minus John Williams' uh, amazing soundtrack uh, when they destroy the Death Star. It, it does not have near the impact. It can uh, make th- or break mm-hmm. any piece of art. Yeah. Just like it, it, it made below deck tonight. <laughs> also about Captain Lee. Yeah, I thought w- what he was saying, and I'm sure he didn't mean it like this, but it was coming off like selfish to me. What if, what if I had to call his parents? Do you know how that would be on me? <laughs> Nick, that would be really heartbreaking for me to have to call the parents. Nick, this man's been on TV for five years. He's drinking his own juice these days. It's all about his persona on TV. I think there's a little acting going on here, a little punching up the drama. I 1,000% agree with you. And you you don't think that that kind of bullshit could come from a man with that beard and that demeanor. Hey, I, hey, I have an idea about safety. Why are you letting a bunch of people that shouldn't have these jobs on these boats for right. the sake of good TV? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a safety Japan. issue, you fucking that asshole. That is such a good point because Captain Lee is sitting there with Ross. Later on in the episode, we'll get to it. But he's walking him through what he calls Towing 101. And I'm sitting there thinking, how I love Ross, but how is he – the bosun, if he doesn't know this shit, like this is not a cool situation for these charter guests. Well, Ross is pretty good looking and he's good TV, so he should be on here, right? Um, mm-hmm. Gosh, I totally forgot to mention, uh, talk about bearing the lead and uh, you know, speaking of Captain Lee being a poor leader, um, we had an- incro- I think he's great. He's definitely too emotional in this situation, but I think he's a good leader. Well, we heard a lot he of- He hates st- babysitting. We heard a lot of stuff about Captain Lee uh, in a conversation we had not too long ago. A wonderful, mm. uh, very long, uh, dense, and and pretty informative uh, interview with one Caroline from uh, the show Bravo's uh, Below Deck. How do we get these people? It's insane. It's absolutely insane. We have a great <sighs> booker, that's for sure. Nick, pop- Nick pops that robe on- uh, outside of here and just fires up the DMs and just sinks <laughs> them every time. Just, just, just from outside. Oh. He gets good. <laughs> yeah. um, from downtown. Oh man, um, he's heating up. He's on fire. The episode will be out soon. Um, so stay probably tuned. in the next six hours. <laughs> stay, stay <laughs> tuned. Don't uh, count on that. <laughs> stay tuned for that episode. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I I said in the interview, I'll say it again. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're one hundred percent Team Caroline. You uh, guys want to have a on air production meeting? Which episode's going up first? What's happening? Oh, I think uh, the people want uh, the. I mean, I think when they listen, they're gonna want have wanted that Caroline episode more because I mean, you know, honey tea, right? But scoops. Um, but we got to get this this here recap out first and. Boy, am I happy you're listening to it right now, audience member. Uh, are they audience members? Several. 
listener. Our listening okay. audience. Our listening so, audience. So, um, I do have to say, all of this is very intense. Like, the, 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 the memo to ham it up goes across the entire uh, 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 deck of my Sienna. Yeah. Ross is looking at the man in the mirror saying this puts life into perspective. And Riley's crying in her OTFs. I do think that it's very, very funny adding insult to injury. Uh, Ash- can make a change. That's <laughs> in my life. Ashton almost gets his foot ripped off. And then. They can't get him in, so he's got to go drive the tender by himself. Just like an hour. Following the ship. No, he was with Tyler. No, he was by himself. No, he was by himself. Oh, really? I apologize. Um, and Thank you. Uh, I actually saw, going to make a change for once in my life. I actually saw Captain <laughs> Lee. It, it's my, Man in the Mirror, Michael Jackson. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we know. Captain Lee said on Twitter that the reason he had Ashton uh, take that tender ride for 45 minutes by himself is because he thought having him concentrate on something would would take his mind off it, which to me sounded like a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but I thought he explained it in the show saying the he, swells were too big. He did. And it was like they were like completely yeah, I, opposed. I bought that like a fucking spoonful of sugar. But Dude, we- they can throw out the term swells that. Anytime, Anytime to confuse us. Reefs, swells, wind, I'll buy all of it. Yep. All of it makes sense. I don't know. Just say it. I believe it. Aquatic beast I would buy. There's no reason for me not to believe that. The them. Kraken's real? Tell me you're, you're, he's up ahead. We can't go that way. Unleash I'll believe it. it. Um, guys, we know that yachting can be dangerous uh, for certain people who are working on the deck. Uh, but Kate says something that uh, was... You know, I bristled a little bit at it. Uh, She said that, you know, yachting is an extremely dangerous profession. They don't want to tell people because they don't want to scare people. Um, Kate, be real, child. You you have never, ever come even remotely close to a dangerous or life-threatening situation. Be real, child. Do we... Do, are we counting fibrillators and overdoses? <laughs> <laughs> See, we got to get her on the show, Pat. So I would love to have you. Pat would love to have Kate, her. Kate, I'd love to have you in, baby. Explain <laughs> yourself. White whale. White whale. Um, all right. Let's go back. Call me Ishmael, guys. Back on deck. We've got a king of the world moment here. Um, I knew that'd get you fired up. I was really excited about it, and I got to tell you uh, – that was the only way I could have been in love with Brandy Coffee more. I would have to say yeah. my my favorite chartered guest. She is. Does that have anything to do with the size of her breasts? It's very, very. Those are. It's a, it's like a one to one ratio. Now, see, I thought that you were going to be cheesed because this is so tired. We've talked about how tired it is. She pulled it off. I don't no, know. She, she did it. <laughs> she, she, no, she did. She not. is the captain now, baby. Um. Uh, you guys know S- size double zero with o- with that <laughs> rack. <laughs> I that's what her girlfriend said when she said she loves to eat like those girls on Instagram who say they love pizza even though they're Instagram butt models. Yeah, I you know when I grow up I want to be an Instagram butt model. I really do. You got the rum for it. You just got to tone it up a bit. Thank you, <laughs> um, uh, guys. You know what they say. A good lunch has the power to alleviate trauma, and that is exactly what Adrian's going to do. We've got a flank steak with a red wine reduction and turmeric shrimp. Now, um, this is going to— And don't forget that Asian salad. I didn't even mention the Asian salad because why would I? What did he do? Throw mandarin oranges on top of spinach? Asian salad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What is a reduction? Guys, you know, this is going to uh, set the stage for— what will ultimately be, you know, a war waged over um, just a lack of knowledge about protein. But I do want to – I'm just blown away that these people associate good food with having like – all these fucking charter guests, all they want is numerous animals on the plate so that they can eat or choose to eat one or many of the animals. Specific animals, Dylan. It's like you have to have – Seafood, like he was making swordfish, lamb, and beef fillet. Like, why do rich people want all these meats? 
Most m- most don't. I think we have a a, a bad a bad cut of people that want to be on TV. Pun. Most rich people do not uh, have to have meat served at, a, at every meal. Because I will tell you a little something. Uh, Brandy, I'm assuming, did not come from money. She is a hot blonde from Sarasota, Florida. She is recently divorced, and I'm assuming this charter yacht money. They said newly single. I assumed it meant recently divorced and i'm assuming this charter yacht money is new to her and she doesn't know shit about fine dining a very a very unlike dylan here well i do want to say i do, i think that you underestimate or uh yeah i think that you i think that you actually over um um i think that you under Hmm. Fuck Jesus. off! These people are fucking lottery winners. I, I I saw them for white trash, fucking new money or later money, as I like. White call trash. It. That's what I said. Florida. They that exactly. They are. They definitely. That woman with the f- smoker's cough. Like yeah. She she fucking buys packs of cigarettes every day. These charter guests. I can't figure them out. Well, I I do think though that you underestimate how piss poor the palate of this country is. Though even the rich, even the rich. These are classless people when it comes to the culinary world but we'll get to the great chicken debate let's talk about ashton and ross um they love each other they absolutely love each other ashton returns and uh they hug probably no less than three times in their touching chests i mean for the entirety of of his return and riley was standing there and she was like sup babe or like she said something really said hi baby not acknowledged yeah hi baby not acknowledged in it was very sweet and sincere she was excited to see him not acknowledged at all nothing she does is sincere i thought maybe that's not true i thought maybe he was just gonna go to ross they'd have their way too long embrace and then he would go to her next. It was like, nope, up the stairs. They just completely ignored her presence. What yeah. Ross and Ashton have, and we had them in studio a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Lovely people. It was cumbersome how much they loved each other. Yes. They make fun of each other. They're very cool with each other. Like uh, the obvious jokes, oh, you guys are gay or whatever. Like, no, they have like bro love uh, for Pure lack of a better term. Yeah. Like, they love each other. They're honored by each other. They're loyal to each other. Like eh, more men should have this. It's uh, it's it's true. I, I was I was gonna make fun of it and rip on it, but uh, it's lovely. Um. All right. Let's talk about Adrian and Laura. Um. Do we actually need to talk about this? I mean, I mean, yeah. This was a pretty big line. It w- it really set the scene. Yeah. Uh, Laura saying. After Ashton is explaining that towing it's just simply easier, right? Uh, which by that I mean I think he just means it's standard you tow it because that's the easier move, and she took it as your. They specifically were cutting Quote, unquote, corners, quote, cutting corners. Yeah. yeah, her cutting corners line, which I read to me like a producer. She just seems like a producer's dream. She's just gonna come in here no, and like I a think, real housewife. Some of the shit she was saying. I think she's just. I mean, I do think she's a producer's dream. I think she's just bitchy and like <laughs> young and entitled, and I think she which, just sucks. Which is also a producer's dream. <laughs> but Laura, we'd love to have you on. And I don't know you. Oh, These Laura. are just, just uh, you know, from the hip, from the hip. Not only would I love to have you on the podcast, I would love to Patrick, develop a what, sexual what relationship you with have her. To say? Um, I like Laura. She's a tour de force. Um, they are spending too much time basically have her pick apart Josiah and Kate's handiwork. Like this Like is, we get it. Th- yeah, we, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um I the only thing I'm excited about Laura is who, who she's going to end up sleeping with uh, on the boat. It'll be Ashton. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be Adrian because Adrian's insane. We'll get to this in a little bit. But um, he goes from wanting to have sex with her to actively hating her. But we'll we'll, we'll talk about it later. I don't think there that's a false dichotomy there, Dylan. No, I don't think it's a false dichotomy. Uh, but we'll get there. Um, yeah. So Adrian gets uh, Ashton some chocolate. And we it's a very nice thing to do. It'll happen a lot more throughout the episode. Um but we must move on. I want to say really quickly, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, Riley's voice to the charter guests <laughs> compared to Riley's voice to every person she works with, there's just a chasm. No, that's a true dichotomy there, Dylan. Um, yeah, we got to do a mashup. But the problem with doing a mashup is you have to go back all the episodes and find the specific parts that we're looking for, cut them together and put them on social media. And who has time for that? It is an incredible amount of work to do some of those projects, but I will say I'm going to have one coming with the bromance of Ross and Ashton. I promise you that this isn't like my Ari 
Ari uh, from our other property bachelor stuff. Ooh, and I'll make you another promise, uh, baby barnacles. I'm starting up an Instagram this weekend. I'm not. I'm not freaking kidding at all. Uh, we've seen a lot of core water in this show. I'm going to make an account, uh, core on below deck, and it's just going to be pictures core on the show. That's all it's going to be. Uh, thousands of them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to give you one more promise there, baby birds, because we, we love to feed you. Uh, uh, Trump is absolutely going to win in 2020. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> and that is no, that is no. You're such an idiot. That is not speaking on my personal what right. I wish to happen, it just is going to happen. I will uh, make you a bet to offset the bet that I'm going to lose. Uh, when we- I've been trying to go double or nothing. Let's all go day, double baby. or nothing. If no, hang on. It on these conditions. If Michelle Obama runs for office, hey guys, I'm going to get a beer. You guys going to talk politics? If for a Michelle minute? Obama runs for office, I will bet you fifty dollars. He has. A, he just has no fucking chance in hell. I'll, I'll wait to take that bet and give the baby birds a little be- peek behind the curtain. Dylan and I have a bet that Trump will not see the four years, which he, I do not think I'm right about. Yeah, uh, he will be. Dylan believed he would be removed or leave office within four years. I said he would complete his term, and now we have. And uh, I think it would be foolish of Michelle Obama to run in 2020. She should run in 2024, and the no, eight she years red save the country. And she eight should years run red, as soon as she possibly can. Eight years red, eight years blue. Eight years red, eight you years blue. You are dumb. We've got to get back to Bravo's Below Deck now that Pat has poured more alcohol for himself. I said I wanted one, didn't I? <laughs> oh, sorry. Dude. Um, <laughs> so um, the doctor arrives and does a pretty intense evaluation of the injuries and says, uh, diagnosis is uh, I sit. It's swollen. There's nothing wrong with your ankle. She was like, what the f- fuck am i doing here this is tahiti i'm losing out on four different you you got to drive out to a boat i mean you know you yeah your time is money i was having a sex party in the jungle and on the beach it spilled over onto the beach and now i gotta look at your ankle and i wanted to talk to caroline about this her foot was more swollen than ashton's was definitely nothing wrong with his foot there could have been something wrong but now you are fine and you wasted that doctor's time Uh, let's talk about kate and Adrian. And Adrian. Now They backstab Laura. Uh, Adrian slips in a little uh, little piece here, doesn't he? Not very Buddhist of him, is it? It wasn't at all. Uh, first he mocks her. He's like, oh, Laura will take care of it. And then he spills the beans that we saw just the scene prior. Talk about Mean Girls just immediately gasping. Yep, 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 yep. He has to tell Kate about that cutting corners remark. And, yeah. and Kate's just like, Laura does not have the experience despite what she says, to be making complaints like that. That was a good Kate. Oh, it's always a good Kate. She has time to prepare those one-liners, doing coke all night, drinking booze, just writing down like on, on, on like a buck slip. Like, yeah. ooh, that'll be really funny on Taking camera tomorrow. Taking small bites of Cheetos just to, to sustain, sustain her. herself. <laughs> that yeah. skinny little hot body. Mm-hmm. So that is a very good point. All those things you said were true, but I believe he said that's a good Kate uh, about my impression, which yeah, I, I wasn't even, intentionally trying I don't to even do. Know why I I went down that road with you because I wasn't talking about Kate. I was talking about the man in the robe. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, guys, let's go to dinner. I, um, I got a couple comments that I did a good Ashton last week for about two. Yes, seconds. you did, sir. Yes, yes you, you did. did. <laughs> yes, you did. I I don't recall it. I'm just I'm just yes and it happened. It happened. Uh, all right, let's go to dinner. First off, I had a debate with my. Darling wife, Celia, um, why don't you guys weigh in? Uh, poultry? Is for poor people? Uh, no. <sighs> the question at the core of all of this is chicken comfort food. Like a Mick chicken is for me. Hold on, you asshole. Put it in context. Chicken pot pies are definitely comfort food. All right, maybe a chicken sandwich isn't comfort food or something like that. Right. Chicken is, uh, you can use it in many different fashions. Right. But a chicken pot pie is definitely comfort food. You know what else is, is comfort food? What? Chicken tendies. 100%. Comfort food. But that is not the question, really. If we drill down, we're talking about the simple dish that the French perfected, that of the roasted chicken. Mm. Is a roasted chicken. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Is that comfort food? No. 
I I'm kind of in these ladies' camps, except I love just proteins. Right, and right, chicken right. to me is like the protein staple. So yeah, that's pretty comfortable to me. That's right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> but you're bringing in the health aspect to it, Nick. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about it. Oven steamed chicken is what is served. Needs a better title. Okay. Um, let's talk about Carrie. I don't know who this bleached bag of bones is, but she had uh, a few too many glasses. <laughs> she is talking out of turn. All right. Just step back for a second, guys. Okay. She starts a mutiny. Everyone mm-hmm. is eating away, enjoying the chicken, which is comfort food. And then this goddamn phony pipes up and says, why are we eating chicken? And then all of them just hive mind at Josiah and say, hey, we need new protein. Uh, uh, I, uh, I need new protein. Can I have another sig? <laughs> that that impression of what was her name? What was this? Uh, this Yenti? Carrie. Carrie. Your Carrie is, I'm, I'm going to be honest, eerily similar to your Luann. Rich people don't behave this way. Uh, they would never say Old uh, money. poor people uh, uh, eat chicken. We don't. This is new retards that got money or someone paid for this boat trip. Behaving this way is, is disgusting. Yeah. You guys are gross. You can, Now you're sending this guy down there to cook you something for you. Oh, you're so fucking special. Eat the fucking chicken. Well, I will also say that not only is it disgusting behavior, as I you know said earlier, it is just not an informed stance on what is objective truth in the culinary world and landscape. Um, and, and ironically, uh, they ate up that lobster, num, 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 which originally was fed to immigrants because there was such a surplus of it. It was one of the cheapest prisoners. foods there are. It yeah. was referred to as the cockroaches of the sea, sir. Um, now, I don't agree with Adrian that often, but I am the freaking gun in his holster and I push <laughs> I'm right by his side. Every Michelin star restaurant in the world, for the most part, unless they specialize in a specific dish like uh, Jake Fye's crab omelet, um, they'll serve you chicken. Do you know why? Because it's a challenge. Uh, Thomas Keller, French Laundry. Ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. I've been you know there. what his favorite dish is to make at home? Chicken. Roast chicken. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know what he probably fucking hates cooking? Filet mignon, which is a cut that has probably swam around that fucking cow's mouth every time she sees it on a menu. No pun intended. Uh, and Poor sober Jimmy during that meal is probably like, <laughs> this is why I hopped off the wagon. Also- Or on the wagon? Uh, I think it's off. Um, There's a whole Seinfeld episode about the confusion of yeah, that. Yeah, well, term. it deserves a whole Seinfeld One last episode. note on rich people. They don't say anything. They, if they didn't like the chicken, they don't say anything. They eat it, and then they say, let's never book a charter with this boat again. Right. Uh, poor people uh, are scumbags like these losers. They complain <laughs> out loud because they think it gives them power. And they're like, hey, look at us. We're empowered. We're making this fool uh, make us our own food like we're kings and queens. Right. The mega, 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 mega rich. Yeah. They would just have the staff killed silently. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. I, can I just say really quickly, I don't get this line of logic. Like, it wasn't on our preference sheet. Why did you make it? <laughs> what the fuck are you Did you t- read through this? Pre- <laughs> you didn't say you didn't want chicken. What the fuck? Are you just assuming that everything you don't put on that preference sheet cannot be be made ever i'm a complete retard and i put down on my notes somewhere it said two no's on the preference sheet and three preferences you want was that in the context of the show at all like things you definitely don't want to be to eat you you only i believe yes there's uh, oh no no's uh two no no's and then three preferences that you'd really like to see right chicken wasn't on any of their no no's yeah and that's a very limited range of no-nos. I hope all these people die of cancer. They all look like they're all white oh, women. Pat, God, that freaking lightning bolt's going to come right back at you. You can't wish cancer on people, man. I do it all the time, dude. Come get me, cancer. All right, um, let's move on. It uh, It's at this point that we need to take a break and talk about Tyler for a bit. <laughs> uh, just because we have to, uh, I guess. Uh, how else are we Hate doing? this motherfucker. Whoa. Hey, JT. That's a big. That's a big word. He's a jerk. We don't really know that much about him. Uh, he's all talk, full of shit. Uh, well, listen. I think he's, I think he's sincere, he's, simplistic. I yeah. live off adrenaline. Didn't want to work in the corporate world. 
was crushing it in the insurance game. Absolutely crushing, crushing it, it at 21 years old. And now, uh, dude, uh, you left that fucking uh, lucrative career to, uh, I saw you with a mop. Pat, when you want to jump smoke, you can't stay four-walled with fluorescent lighting above you. You got to get out there and you got to jump smoke. There's a reason Vanna Herzog directed smoke jumpers in Entourage. It's one of the most exciting professions you could partake it's in. an extremely compelling uh, lifestyle. But um, let's talk about Compelling the- because of the repelling. Um, let's talk about the log line. Uh, he is, in fact, a thrill seeker and mm. an adrenaline junkie. But Ashton getting dragged into the water was not the kind of adrenaline that he was looking for. Um, he has It's kind of like Ashton was looking for mischief, but that's not the kind of mischief he was looking for. Oh, do it, do it, dude. Wait, how does he say it? We love to get silly and we love to get mischievous. <laughs> Nice. It felt nice. like that was Dude, good. That was great. I was like, this is going to be just like that band that sang that song. You found me. It's the sophomore slump. You can't hit it out of the park the second time. But he you did. did. But he did. God, I'm excited to it's hear that. It's the robe. <laughs> hey, can I get back to this Tyler Punk? Uh, Yes. Uh, okay, okay. This is how much I hate this guy. Well, uh, all right. So we set him up he, he, in his OTF. He like he's trying to let the audience know like his whole spiel, right? This motherfucker is the hey, I'm cool. I live off the grid, li- uh, living my best life. I know this guy. Four years from now, you will find out that he has gotten his entire network of family and friends embroiled in financially in debt with like a third party Ponzi scheme, right. and moved to another country. Yeah. This is this motherfucker. Yeah. Tyler, I got my eyes on you, mother. You know who else is off the grid like Tyler is? The former governor of Minnesota. <laughs> oh, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. He lives in Baja, Mexico, man. I live in Mexico. I can't speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got to talk about um, Tyler and Ross having a quick little chat, don't we? And uh, in in the macro sense, Bravo's below deck. Right, right, right. But uh, you did want to get into this. Yes. Uh, they had a little chat about this crazy day they had. And Tyler, <laughs> very just thinking about himself, responds to Ross that it was a good day. Right. This is, You really are an adrenaline junkie, you yeah. freak. This was not a good day. We almost lost a man out there. You guys didn't pick up on this? I'm the only one that had a note about that? That was funny. No, no, no. Now that you're thinking about it, now that you say it, I do recall seeing that and just being like, whoa. That, and Ross, like, what's wrong about that? Ross could have let it slide, but he's like, well, well not, not a good day. Yeah. This isn't what we call a good day in yeah. charter yachting. Um, uh, so, you know, just transitioning forward, the girls are up there, uh, the charter guests, they are dancing away. They are having a great time. That's when they needed a strapping young man on on board. Who, uh, <laughs> are you saying that you would have fit that bill? Uh, you would have picked up on that as they continue because it would have been like, who recaps this show? I, I got to ask a question real quick. Do you? I'm getting the the kind of painting the picture when you go to Pornhub or whichever uh, <laughs> engine you use. Do you ever type in the letters M, I, L, F? I, I don't really uh, – most most of the stuff I, – I don't look at a ton of porn, surprisingly. But if I do, it's I use, just two girls I'll put in. And look, I roll the dice on Pornhub all the time too. I'll just type in like fat heels <laughs> and see what comes up. I'm never disappointed. He loves feet. Speaking of Pornhub, one of the greatest moments in podcasting history, Brian Callen, Brendan Schaub, watching Randy Couture – his leaked sex tape of him jerking off and showing his asshole in real time is the funniest shit <laughs> I've I ever no heard. I had no idea that that existed. Just happened. We've got to get to Bravo's Below Deck. Uh, turn down gate. Let's talk about a turn down gate. Uh, Kate. Drop. Turn down for what? Uh, Wimp in it. Uh, Kate <laughs> drops a little grenade and Adrian um, 
goes into the bunk, and the the little grenade is this very passive aggressive. Uh, yes, I do have your thing. Sorry, I was taking care of somebody's work who claims they used to be a chief stew. So Adrian goes into the bunk, and I, this is when I say I think he's gone from uh, wanting to have sex with Laura to actively hating her because he sits down and basically says. Um, you're supposed to do bitch work. You're pissing everybody off. Shut your mouth. That's rank. I'm getting a shower. That's exactly what he said, pretty much. I mean, that is also- not, that's not a good strategy if you're trying to to get somebody smitten with you. Uh, if they have daddy issues, it might be. She's she's uh, all like, oh, this man's telling me to get in line. I know that's not really Adrian's M.O. Modus operandi. operandi. It's been a while. Uh, but he also said... I'm just trying to help you with your integration, which I thought it was a really fun line. And Kate even tweeted. Weird word integration, though. I, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to help you work in here. Like, you're, like he's, it sounded like he's from the Church of Scientology there. Like, right. I'm trying to help you with your integration into this circle. No doubt. No doubt he did sound like that. But Kate, not never knowing he had spoken those words to Laura, tweeted out, I just fell in love with Adrian even more. Uh, she loved hearing that line and him talking shit to Laura. Um, mm. Guys, the next morning, Pilates is requested and um, a subsequent request is made because uh, somebody asks to do Pilates. Um, Laura goes and asks Kate to get up early. Um, Some I don't even know if someone did ask to do, do Pilates. Laura seemed to shove that That's option. a good point. Laura seemed to shove this option down this woman's throat. She was like, oh, yeah, do you want to, You would like to do some yoga with me? No, she gave two options, be on the cycle or do yoga. That's what the, that's what the woman was replied with. She was excited. <laughs> that, was, that was not bad. Commit. Uh, Laura was like, would you like to do some yoga? And the woman replied, she was like, I could do that or just some car, some, some bike, some of the bike. Uh, and Laura was the one that was trying to get out of her stewardess. Namasided? N- Namasided. Namas, she was namasided. Namas stay in the hot tub because fuck yeah. Anyway, yeah, Laura's yeah. a triple fucking threat. Uh, I think she's really cute. Uh, what are I, the three threats? Uh, she's a stew. She's a yoga instructor and she's a petty bitch. That's fun. Uh, uh, was that wrong? I just don't think those are three great threats. Oh. She's also a certified personal trainer. Laura asks Kate to wake up early, and you do not want to do that. No. Um, it's just a bad idea. It's like- um, Feeding a gremlin after 11? Well, I was going to say, like, waking a bear up in, like, January 15, you know? What, ta- what date are bears supposed to wake up? Only well, sometime in March. Okay. With that being said, uh, well, one thing I caught here is when Laura was yelling up to Kate because she was on the bottom floor, Kate looks like she's kind of on a balcony. Did you guys catch this? I did. Is that how nice her quarters are? That Queen's she gets quarters. The queen gets to yell down to the steerage. Uh, Great to, word. Um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Did you catch that, Nick? Uh, they did give a name to their, they said, the, 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 the penthouse, I believe they called their... They're uh, yeah, filled with Cheetos. Their quarters in class, uh, the penthouse, baby. Nick, you uh, did a freeze frame last week where you uh, stopped on somebody's preference sheet. Uh, you saw on Jimmy's preference sheet that he prefers non-alcoholic beer. Uh, not prefers it, has to have it. Um, today we that's only in the evening because right. in the morning, yes. In the morning, he drinks what every recovering alcoholic drinks, <laughs> a shit ton of black coffee. And they made a note of it. <laughs> I feel like Bravo is leaving me breadcrumbs, and I'm the only one picking them up. I freeze it on that preference <laughs> sheet. I'm so glad you picked up on the three cups of coffee. There is the only reason they would put that line in there. Yeah. Jimmy's at three cups of coffee They today. then go back to him later in the episode, and they go, you want some coffee? And he goes, ah, oh, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a bad boy today. I'm glad they showed a little uh, movement out of him because there was one, and I actually posted on the Another Below Deck podcast Instagram today. There is a shot of him at a dinner, and he's got some dark sunglasses on, and it looked like he was a Weekend at Bernie's type character. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was worrisome, but no, nope, once he gets that coffee, and he'll be pepped right back up. Yeah, he's smoking Marlboro Lights on the bow. No um, doubt. He also loves donuts. Guys, we've 
got to talk about uh, the, 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 the feud continues between Kate and Laura. Kate comes down. She is uh, now woke. And she says in one of the most fierce, bitchy tones I've ever heard in my life. Have you ever done turndowns before in your life? <laughs> it was vicious. I tasted the venom. Whoa. Whoa. Have you ever done turndowns before in your life to somebody who's been on that boat for like two days? That is pissing on your spot. And then to just a cherry on top. When she says, oh, you know, I just wasn't sure, Kate responds, if you have any questions, you can ask me. The lead chief, Stu. I mean, absolutely dominated. She says, then dismisses her to go do Pilates. Do you want to go do your Pilates now? Sure. I mean, <sighs> fucking 10-8 round. 10-8 round. Like, I, I, I thought we weren't caring. I thought that was the vibe. Yeah, that's clearly not the vibe. That was another line by her that just sounded like someone wrote it for her. But maybe, like you said, she's just genuinely an entitled bitch. Okay, so let's get to tender drop numero dos. Here begins another all-out brawl between Riley and Ross. Uh, namaste, no way with these two. Pat, hit us with a clip. This is exactly why I don't want to be woken up last minute to do anchor. I should have been up early. And you were trying I... to f*** around with the line. And what? you were trying to fend off the tender. Because... And I said, get away from because... the tender. Okay, give me one second to f***ing respond to you. You hear me? No, First... This is oh. it. You just listen up, okay? Chandler this all is over a... again. No, it's no not you Chandler. give me one minute. No, to... just... Then give me then one f***ing talk. We had this incident that just happened with Ashton. She should know better. I'm just, why? literally, I'm just done with this f***ing attitude. When I just say, get the f***ing away from the line just leave it and i did i stood no, you behind did it. the you line you were waiting there let's go down here because there's guests back there i just kind of put something together together about the technicalities of yachting mm -hmm. he said you were trying to fend off the boat that's why they have the fenders anytime they're docking. They drop them so it doesn't run into stuff. Then that's why they're those big black bumper nice. things. Yeah, fending off. That it's makes fun. Sense. It's fun. We're learning. We're learning. I, you guys caught up on the language sooner than me. I'm still confused by all of it. Now and the, life. There's a couple <laughs> things going on here. I do think that Ross was uh, feeling a lot of pressure. Uh, because of what had just happened with Ashton. So maybe it was a little frazzled and unclear. Um, but that does not excuse uh, Riley's behavior. I mean, I took, I said earlier, I'm fucking done. Um, I'm absolutely done with Riley. She says just like Chandler. Now, track here with me, boys. Chandler is a... Um, There's a lot of things you could say right here. Chandler was a dick to Riley. No doubt. Um, but Ross is a completely different type of person with a completely different demeanor and style of management. If both of those people are providing the same experience for you, they're not the fucking problem. You're the common denominator. Dylan, I, I'm glad you brought this up. I, I think what you're saying is uh, Riley, uh, Riley is a pain in the ass. Yeah, Riley's aggressive and unmanageable. She goes from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. But in this particular case, again, she didn't have to escalate it this quickly, but he did not give clear instructions. No, he did not. The second he he said, "Get behind that line," she stepped behind the line. And he meant get off the deck. Which she, had she been in that meeting, that little tutorial Captain Leave gave Ross only then she would have known that. But for some reason, that was only for Ross. He didn't convey it clearly. And that he, said, he acted like he didn't want to get into it with his third deckhand, and that's why he kind of uh, apologized and got out of the situation. Actually, it was because he was actually wrong in this situation. I think he fessed up to the fact that he was wrong, but it just it's still... She is... A, and I know I'm going to sound like a, like a snowflake when I say this, but... She's abusing him. She is abusing the respect that he has for her. She is abusing the leniency that he bestows Taking upon her. Taking advantage of. And she is completely whipping him across the face with her massive red cock. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I got to say, when she gets really pissed off, 
Uh, her upper lip dries up and dies up under her gums. It's really, really creepy to look at because she's already got a very skeletal face. Riley, if you're listening, I'm so, so sorry, but I, I'm just sick and tired of you. I'm sick and fucking tired of you. You got to stop talking to people like this. You got to fucking stop. Um, Ashton is laid up getting fed like a god, like he's Alexander the Great. Yeah. Kiwi and eggs. Although it sickened me how he was laying there, I did love how the crew, the the ones that are there, are just coming together, all supporting Ashton. Yep. Ashton, I liked him when he was in here. You didn't like him. No. Everybody seems to like no, Ashton. No, I Even liked Car- Ashton. I loved him. Even Caroline, when she was on the show, that was that was he just gets along with everybody. Yeah, he's a very affable person. Everyone I was going to say affable. Everyone we don't like has not gotten in the gauntlet here. Okay, Kate, Captain Lee. And- I like. Oh God, you guys are. I don't. I don't like Riley. I love Riley. I'm a huge Riley fan. I'm not. How did you not? And she was a breath of fresh air. She didn't give a shit. She drives me insane. I don't like her, dude. Am I the only fucking one? Somebody listening has got to be like, how, whore. how are Nick and Patrick saying that they're on Riley's side? She's fucking horrible. You're saying horrible. you just said two different things. You're like the leftist media. You, <laughs> we like Riley as a person. We think she's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, she is insubordinate as fuck and needs to chill out and quit quit. Alphaing these her male spirit. Keep in mind, not those before. two things are not mutually exclusive. They exist in the same body. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. False dichotomy, you might say. Uh, let's talk about the birthday cake. Uh, Kate. It's a mixture of cakes. I love what- That was my Josiah. Josiah's, uh, well, Adrian, well, where was the breakdown of communication there? There were clearly two cakes. There was clearly a mixture of cake. I think what the Jos- fuck was Adrian doing? Josiah. I think Josiah started to do like a bit. Eventually, he, I think Adrian they both had to. I think Adrian literally didn't know what Josiah was saying, and then Josiah continued on with a bit, and he just kept saying the same thing, even though he he knew like Adrian just wasn't like gra- mixture sounded weird with his London accent. Yeah, his faggy <laughs> London accent. <That's> what- <laughs> Let me say this: you know, yeah. I've been uh, I, I have not liked Kate this season. Uh, while she's hot. And a mean girl. Uh, we're talking about the cake, the birthday thing. She yep. makes a statement like, when you're 43, like, get over your birthdays or something I, like that. I have that written down. I also I, do. I, I, I have written down. I totally agree. She's being mean and hateful, but she's 100% <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, because this is actually like a hacky comedic premise. Yeah. Well, After you get to a certain age, your birthdays don't matter. It was mastered. By Pat Oswald. he he nails this. He he's 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 like one, two, three, four, everything up to ten, twenty, twenty one, thirty, and then it starts to like go all downhill. But he's super funny about it. So it's not that her like her material is groundbreaking, but her delivery. She's a showman. Uh, the way she's she incredible. Tra- the way nobody cares about your forty third. I can't do it the way she did it. She's she's amazing. Uh, I love her to death. Uh, she hates birthdays because she's like, hey, what's that painting with that handsome guy there where he's trapped in a painting? That's Kate staying young. Come on, smart guys. Are you talking about Guernica? No. What's the fucking painting? Uh, where well, you're trapped in the painting with your age. It was uh, in the what's that Sean Connery movie where he was uh, with all the uh, the guy who did uh, Twenty Thousand Knots Under the Sea. Yeah, it was a great movie. The League of Extraordinary. Yes, Gentlemen. what is that guy's? Oh, um, the um, the Charles Dickens character. Um, Oliver. No, what's his name? Twist. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I, I should know the references before. I no, it. no, no. I'm, it's driving me crazy. I've Dorian always... Gray. She's fucking Dorian Gray. She's trapped, staring at herself in a mirror, but it's like a painting. Dorian Gray, that's Kate. She thinks forever she's going to look like that, but she's not. She's trapped. She's evil. She's trapped in the pain. Um, I've always found Dickens to be somewhat overwrought. Um, you know what else is overwrought? That fucking cake. Um, it is. It looks disgusting. I mean, I know he's a chef, he's not a baker, but seriously, his cake decoration is piss-fucking-poor. It looks like a nipple. 
Um, and <laughs> that comment leads to uh, just sexual harassment, prosecutable sexual harassment. Uh, Pat, play the clip. Do you think it looks like a nipple? Like a nipple? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you mean for that? No. I was inspired by you. Oh. The form of your breast. I think Adrian is the cutest cutest guy ever but he definitely has one thing on his mind total creep scumbag what is cute about that? i've never said shit like that and you guys look at me sometimes like i'm a fucking creep yeah. by the way you losers that give us one stars i'm a creep i'm a misogynist i would never say this to a woman in a workplace yeah ever i make jokes on a podcast right it, that's so 1000 percent right i don't know how he's allowed to say these things as the, it's fucking 2018. People are dropping left and right for shit like this. How is this creepy little peahead allowed to say the grossest shit to people? It's fucked up! As the great Adam Sandler once said in Billy Madison, that's assault, brother. So Ashton um, is a fan of, you know... Sexual aggression as well. Um, he hits oh, on Jesus. he hits on Laura big time when she's hanging up thongs. Um, Would you like a foot massage? Just the foot massage thing. Like lose the massage. I love feet. I never offered a woman a foot massage. Moving forward, like you think it's too obvious. That's why he doesn't. He would love to. Peeling off a heel and and jabbing a thumb in the bottom of a sole. I mean, that's that's very intimate. You can't just do that. That's very intimate. Dropping your nose down to foot level, taking a whiff, that's <laughs> intimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Tyler and Riley talk about uh, how they were formerly engaged. Um, this didn't really work out for Tyler because he uh, wanted to, to work, uh, quote, unquote, in fire. Uh, Pat, um, you have a clip for us? Did you cheat on her? No, we just went different ways. I wanted to continue firefighting. Oh, you were a firefighter? I still am. When I was 21, I got engaged to my high school sweetheart, but it didn't really work out. She wanted me to do construction, and I wanted to be in fire, and she was... Go ahead, Dill. I mean, one, that song was, that song was good. <laughs> I'm telling you. Sliding, he, up, sliding up and down the neck like a goo-goo doll. They want to get a second take on that. You wanted to do fire? Yeah, play that clip one more time. When I was 21, I got engaged to my high school sweetheart, but it didn't really work out. She wanted me to do construction, and I wanted to be in fire, and she wasn't too keen on that. It's like the beginning of a U2 song. Dude, and, like, the story of them, like, I want to see, like, a movie about a smoke jumper. And a Mandy Moore love. would be in it. Yeah. And She'd I be just, the wife. I want that song to just be under Ryan it. Reynolds would be the husband. Um... Or, to be honest, Riley and Tyler's story that's unfolding right before our eyes. This was a meet cute right here. They're, she's quite literally showing him the ropes and they're, hey, we both have horrible, regrettable tattoos. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's bond. Nick, I think you were, her showing the ropes means she wants to fuck him and he will eventually fuck her. I know. he has That's what I hate about being old. Young people get to fuck each other on the basis of stupid Things that you connect with. Hey, uh, you got that tattoo? I have a tattoo. Hey, you want to go in the other room and uh, Pat, I'll How many your dick? licks did you get in because of that fucking barbed wire tattoo? Oh, pff, 120. Oh, quantifiable, like to that degree. I sl- oh, yeah. Well, they haven't had sex yet, but they will have sex soon. Five times. Um, Okay. Too many times. Dinner time. Jungle glam dinner time. Um, what is served? Lobster and cognac bisque with a tomato powder. Also, surprise, fucking surprise, medium rare filet mignon. Mm, one note, uh, expensive foods appease dumb people. Yep. Um, filet, I mean, everybody knows. I mean, it's a tender meat, no doubt, uh, but it is more or less flavor, f- uh, more or less flavorless. You have to salt the fuck out of it for it to have any 
merit whatsoever. Can what I, are you doing? Can I just say the tits have been out? I mean, the, the, the charter guest tits have been out for the entire episode. Like the boobs are just out constantly. And it is because- If you bought it, flaunt it. It is because they are uh, Florida purchased uh, augmentations. Lottery ticket winners. Um, Dr. Katzenmeyer, he's the best in the business. But why are they out all the time? For whom? There's one fat guy in Jimmy- who is drinking coffee constantly and has destroyed everything in his life. And since his sobriety, has not been able to uh, lose his inhibition sexually right. and uh, even unable to become erect. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. I've done a ton of digging on Jimmy. But so, but so I, I say again, who's the cleavage for? Uh, Ashton. No one. But what's more Tyler. sad is most lottery winners... Um, uh, lose all the money within five years. Yeah. And we've discussed this. End up, of course, shooting themselves in the head while being hung. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to say, I don't buy that whole lottery thing. If I won the lottery, I'd have that shit dripped. Oh, you take the long, long game plan. Of course I would. Mm hmm. Who like 200 needs, grand a year. Who needs a lump sum of $40 million? You take 275,000 a year. No, I, I take I take that lump sum and then I then I got the drip cuz uh, my clothes is so fly. Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't know. People drip say and fly? I was trying to use drip. Drips like a like drips a, like a, like you're like you you're it's like It's hot now. Yeah, yeah, like you're icy, you're fresh. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's hey, pretty new, on. right? Yeah, yeah. I have a take on this. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I've been so high one time. Uh You've that, been so high one time? Yeah. Ashton comes down to the uh, place where they keep the jet skis, is what I'm going to call it. I know it has a name, but I forget every Boat time. Dock. Uh No. Uh, so Ashton walks down, and Riley flips out because she's disingenuous. And <laughs> uh, and Ashton is, feels that and is like, yeah, 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 creep me out. Um, I love Tyler's counterpoint to Riley's uh, amped up nature. He's just like, you want some nuts? <laughs> And then Ashton's joke fell flat. He said something about already having a No, ton. I've had enough nuts for this morning. No Nick you Davis. You do a good there. Ashton, too. I said that I was going to retire that until I had it, and I should have. Um, all right. So breakfast number two. Breakfast, breakfast service. Number two. We didn't mention the gluten-free pan pancakes earlier. They've done it already this season. Yeah, yeah. Um, the boat... Comes to port after breakfast. What what is for breakfast? Salmon and cream cheese breakfast wraps. Yep. Crispy bacon. And I'm really surprised you didn't remember this, Dylan, because uh, they had some apple turnovers. Oh I love my those. Gosh, I Makes did me feel like this. home. Uh, uh, dude. Oh, my God. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. You must have been losing your attention span towards the end there. Because, I always uh, do. <laughs> what would you <laughs> rather doesn't? have, an apple turnover or a maple glazed donut? Maple glazed donut. I'm going to also go maple glazed donut. Oh, maple glazed is wonderful. Sit down in your bed. Have that sitting on your lap. This does not sound good. A cold coffee. Watching uh, some TV. That is paradise, motherfucker. And that's a turnover for Dylan, though. Mm -hmm. The same scene, but a turnover. Yeah, I would go with the turnover. We know. We know. Guys, the boat comes into port, and I gotta ask. Um, we've seen these people a lot. I don't think that we've ever talked about them, and I've never really uh, been triggered uh, the way that I was when I saw them the other night. Who are these strangers in different clothing that catch the ropes of the boats? <laughs> oh. I absolutely had that same thought. There is a fucking woman who looks like she just went to, like, she looks like she's going on a boat, and they're like, hey, can you catch this real quick? And she's like, absolutely, whatever I can do to help. They work for the docks. No, I think I think people in the boating world are just like, there's like a, you do that. I think that's everybody yeah. does that. If if the if the crew of my Sienna were the people on the docks, they'd be catching it for a boat that isn't theirs as well. I think it's it's like you hunker uh, truck. Yeah, a trucker, trucker. hunker. <laughs> doom, doom. It's like truckers honking at each other. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's just like that. I, I love that take. I love that take. I completely agree with Because I had the, this, this racked my brain as well. I was like, why? Great minds. Think twice. But um, uh, otherwise, everybody would be wasting time getting off the boat themselves. Just do it for the next person. Pay it forward. Uh, Brandy Coffee gives them a uh, goodbye, a nice tip. 
the biggest thing to me about this goodbye was uh, Laura showing up looking like absolute shit. Yep. Yeah. She had just got, she made Kate at a preference sheet meeting look like she was getting ready for the Oscars red carpet right. because she looked like absolute hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it didn't go, go unnoticed from Captain Lee. He said hello, sleepyhead, and then she apologized. She was clearly a uh, horrible, horrible employee. She I'd did still do her. Oh, absolutely, uh, me too. Yep, me too. We'd, and we'd love there. to have you in. Uh, we have Laura, got to, have to go to the tip meeting. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, the suitcases. You know my wife. Uh, we watch the show together. She's a bit petty, a little bit judgmental. She catches the details that I am not looking for. Uh, she uh, confirmed my feelings and my determinations uh, earlier that these people were complete white trash. She looked at their suitcases and she said they were bought at Target. Uh, these people are not rich. These people are actually... Uh, white trash. Uh, their suitcases were cheap. And uh, that is, uh, as far as my wife is concerned, uh, uh, that's how you determine whether or not people are wealthy or uh, uh, poor. Yeah, it's down to the details. If you're truly, truly wealthy, all of those bases are covered. If you are not, you can sacrifice certain things. Rich people cannot afford to not be seen. Rich people cannot afford to be seen. Not buttoned up. My luggage comes from Ross. So let's get to this tip meeting. Um, seventeen grand goes around to sixteen. Sixteen grand goes around to everybody, and Ashton steps up. Uh, very, very brave, brave Ashton. He says that he'd like to give up the tip that he got. Nick, do it, Captain. I'd like to ask your permission to. Give up my tip if that's okay with you. <laughs> Second half was pretty good. I was up, up and down. <laughs> Dude, up you got to get yeah. in the character. You got to get in the character. Yeah. You sound mischievous. Um, he wants to give up his tip money because he did not work uh, this charter on account of his foot was almost ripped off, but absolutely not. Um, if he was Caroline, they would have had him on a stool. Right. Exactly. They would have been hitting her. Everybody would have taken turns hitting her with their tips. Straight across the temple. Captain Lee put the kibosh on this fucking concept. Yeah, I think Ashton had to do it, though. I think if he didn't attempt to do this, everybody everybody would have been like, he's I, just going to take it, huh? I hope it's not that kind of work environment where you're like, your foot almost got ripped off. You uh, know who didn't attempt to do it? Who? Caroline. She never offered to give hers back up, but she said she only missed half a day. Uh, I don't know when we're going to drop this episode, but Caroline, when we had that, uh, by the way, you guys got to listen to this episode we have with Caroline. Uh, she says she's making bank on this boat, but when I do the math on this tip, it's 1300 bucks each. That's not a lot of money, in my opinion. Not a lot of money. Um, all right. For Le- three days' work, I mean, it's not for these people's level of competency. It's not bad. It's not bad money at all. Um, all right. We $400 got- a day, 250 working days a year. That's 100 grand. So, yeah, not that great. Um, we have got to wrap this episode up, but lastly, we have to talk about the sobering meeting. Um, this is when I realized that it probably was kind of, um, it could have been a very, very bad incident. Um, just the, the kind of, you know, the, the breaking down of the game tape. I mean, you see the rope get really taut and I was thinking, yeah, it could have been super bad. Also the reactions of the people who had never seen it seemed genuine AF. I mean, we saw him get swept off the dock. How that that's pretty scary. Didn't in look like itself. that big of a deal. My whole point is just get 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 over it. Um he's fine. Ashton is fine until he starts talking about Ross and then he just falls apart. What really surprised me watching this footage is how quickly I, I'm, I'm in that water. I'm just thanking God right now that I'm sitting here watching this and that it's, it's, not, it's not a complete different scenario. I've been given a second chance here. Hard to watch. But those are mistakes that we made collectively. I kind of just get reminded about what's important. My relationship with Ross, the rest of the crew, um, I mean, they, they were amazing. Specifically, my relationship with Rolls. Not your mother, not your father, <laughs> not living, not your dog. Ross. Ross. I get it. Ross is dope. <laughs> He's a very nice man. Um, lastly, I just want to say Lee is. 
you know, I have mixed feelings about him now. Don't! Uh, after talking to Caroline, which you guys will hear, but uh, Leah's, uh, you know, tonight, he's just the cutest. Uh, and I think that, uh, no, I do. I think he's the cutest. And I think his tears had the biggest impact on this crew. Um, I think his tears really drove the point home. Crocodile tears for TV. For everybody. Fuck him. For everybody but Jimmy, it was very sobering. Guys, that's the show. Uh, We will be back next week with more Below Deck. And look out for the interview with Caroline coming right on the heels of this here episode. Drop a five-star rating in the reviews, not four or three or two or one. Uh, Give us five stars. We need to hear from you guys. Uh, Follow us on Instagram at another Below Deck Podcast underscore. That's cute. And um, also, subscribe if you have not. Uh, My name is Dylan saying goodbye. Nick. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. See ya. show uh that face is a face only a mother could love but i would make love to it uh, <laughs> twice uh probably in the same week take her out to dinner never call again she texts two times i would not respond <laughs> <laughs> that's all that very- might make it